Michelle Prince, founder and CEO of Performance Publishing Group, making a difference one story at a time. We'll be shining the light on successful founders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders that are getting results and making a difference. We'll talk about how they built their businesses, are creating movements, and leveraging the power of authority in their own lives. Be sure to stick around to the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Michelle Prince with the Power of Authority Spotlight, where we shine the light on successful entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders, and founders who are doing incredible things. They're they're huge results, but they're making an impact along the way. And our guest today is is somebody you're going to learn a lot about communication and all kinds of great things. But first, this episode is brought to you by Performance Publishing Group. Performance Publishing Group provides done-for-you publishing services for people that have a story. Do you have a story? Everyone has a story. But when you put that story in a book, that's when you can make the biggest impact. So for more information and to grab a free strategy call, just go to performancepublishinggroup.com. All right, let me introduce you to my guest, Jane Hansen. Jane grew up in rural Minnesota, coming to New York three decades ago to join NBC as an anchor and correspondent in New York. She co-anchored the Today in New York and hosted Jane's New York. She's covered events ranging from the tragedy of 9-11 to the joy of Yankees victory parades to Wall Street and Washington, has interviewed presidents, business leaders, prisoners, and celebrities, traveled as far as Gobi, the Gobi Desert of Mongolia and the great depths below New York City for her special reports. Most recently, she hosted a daily entertainment and lifestyle program, New York Live, for NBC4. Jane has won nine Emmys, was named Correspondent of the Year by New York's police detectives and firefighters, among many other awards. She's currently a much sought after communications coach, working with top leaders, top tier leaders in every field while continuing to MC, speak, and host broadcasts. And she's also a lot of fun. So welcome to the show, Jane. Thank you so much. That was way too long. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't it funny? Like I, I I have the same thing when I do a podcast where somebody's reading my bio, I'm like, Wait, why did I why did I give them such a long bio? But you know, it is what it is, right? <laughs> it is. And thank you so much for having me on. This is great. Well, I'm excited to talk to you. I mean, obviously, your your bio speaks for itself, your background, you know, being in journalism, um, how exciting. Let's start there. What was it like being a correspondent in New York City? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, the the greatest part of all, and I consider it to have been having first of all, when you love what you do for work, it isn't work. And it's passion. And my passion for telling stories, you talked about telling stories in the intro to this podcast. And that's what I did every day for a living for um, for most of my career. And the stories are unbelievable. I uh, You never know what you're going to get any day of the week, because uh, it would vacillate so much. And just that ability to watch history being made in front of my eyes was perhaps the most thrilling part of all. And in New York City, which is the largest city in the U.S. and, of course, the the number one broadcast market, we saw everybody and everything. And the last show that I did, which um, or the show that I have my own called Jane's New York, allowed me to travel all over the world because it was based upon the premise that had to have a connection with New York. Well, where can you not find a connection to New York in the world? So I'd come up with these crazy ideas and they go, okay, go for it. Hence, I'm on a dinosaur dig in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia, um, which was really super cool. And we found four teenage dinosaurs all facing in the same direction, which clearly indicated some colossal catastrophe. So that was pretty exciting. Of course, when we're on the um, on a former Soviet je- uh, h- helicopter that's flying there, that's got a fuel tank on board and pilots that are smoking, you're kind of wondering if you've taken your own life in your hands. <laughs> but we landed safely. <laughs> we made it. Um, so I just have had it, it, it. It's been that that part of my life was truly amazing. And when you come from a little tiny town um, on the prairies of Minnesota, my hometown is very close to the setting for Little House on the Prairie, for those of you who might remember that. I do. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you could see prairie. You just saw the prairie in any direction. We didn't even have a stoplight in town. And to go from there to New York was, the contrast was quite inconceivable, but 
it was my thirst for knowledge, my curiosity, and my wants and need to see the world that brought me there. So it was great. Wonderful. That is so exciting. And I, I shared with you before the show that my son is in New York and he also had that dream to, you know, live in, in New York and the city. There is no other place like it. And but but for you, what I love is and and how exciting to to go on all of those trips. And I can't I can't even imagine the people that you've met and talked to. Um, but what you said about stories, I mean, that's everything, right? We are we connect through stories um, about media knows that better than anyone. And what what are some give me an example of a story or two that has just like really it's stuck with you even all these years later? I think perhaps the one that uh, brought chills to me was the day I was sent. Uh, as you know, the in New York, the United Nations every September has this this meeting of all these great leaders from all over the world. And way back, this is very beginning, very close to the beginning of my career, um, there was a South African apartheid leader named Desmond Tutu who was in New York. And so I was given the assignment that morning of going down to a little park in lower Manhattan and interviewing him. And so as we're doing this interview and reporters are always on the move, you're always like, oh, I got to finish this. I got to move. Got to go here. Got to go there. And they and the people that were with him interrupted the interview. I said, look, I'm almost done. Can I just finish? And they go, no, you really, really want to wait. So they pulled him aside and told him he just won the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in, in what he had done for the people of South Africa. And so he comes back and he says, I get chills now when I think about it, because in that moment, you know, the tears are coming from his eyes. I'm tearing up and we're talking about this unbelievable recognition for his work. But as a very humble man, he said, it's, it's, it's not just about me. It's about all those people that worked with me and that I worked for to bring us to this whole different place in that country. and. So to be in the presence of greatness like that is is pretty amazing and pretty wonderful. Wow. So, now that is a story. I, I, who else could tell that story to be there in that moment? That yeah. It, yeah, it was just, it was pretty cool. Uh, another time I, when for one of my shows, I went underground New York. And so we went, there's layers and layers and layers and layers of, things underneath the streets of New York, you know, electric grids and just you you name it and it's there, water reservoirs. So we went down, um, it was a four minute ride in a construction elevator to get way down underneath where they were doing, they were building the uh, water tunnel because New York needed a new water tunnel badly. Yeah. And we're meeting then Mayor Bloomberg down there to do an interview with him. And so there's two police officers with them, two guards, right, that always accompany him. And they're carrying all these ropes and all this other stuff. And I go, um, I'm, we're like, we're as far underground as the Chrysler building is above ground. Wow. And, and I go, I said, so wh what's with all the ropes and stuff? And they go, if that elevator fails, we're taking him up by rope and, you know, pounding in the rocks. On, and I go. What about me? Right. <laughs> and they go, you're on your own. Yeah, we didn't think but, about that. We just brought yeah. one. We just have rope for him. <laughs> but, but because the mayor is, is such a gracious, wonderful man, um, he was like, come on, they're just kidding. You're going first. So. Oh, that's so great. Um, and, you know, you're doing so much today. So all that you did with, um, you know, being a correspondent and all, I mean, it's it's all communications, right? It's all connecting, it's telling the story and, and communicating it in a way to, to impact people and various reasons. But so you're continuing that. And I know you're doing a lot of writing for Forbes. Uh, talk a little bit more about what you're doing today. So one of the things that, that happened, because, um, you know, the broadcast business, you've got really intense deadlines yeah. and your your life in many ways is not your own. And because of the scheduling and all of that. And I realized um, that I wanted to not face those deadlines anymore, that I wanted to have a, a different kind of life. Yeah. And as I was sitting in the, coming out of a studio, when this happened a couple of times in a row, there would be people that I would will interview and they'd say, I didn't get to say what I wanted to say. And I realized that as I interviewed them, I was taking them down a little garden pathway about what I wanted to talk about and what I thought the audience wanted to hear even though what they wanted to say in their message was different. Wow. And 
I instantly got this aha moment where I thought, I know how to teach people to do this. And so that's sort of how it all began, was me working with people to help them tell their stories. Now, that's branched out into a lot of um, you know presentation training, helping people give speeches, helping people do videos, helping people even do better in meetings. And then, of course, always the, the media aspect of, of interviews and things. And so that's really where my business began, um, this business as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it was a little scary at first because I thought, am I really going to be able to pull this off myself? I obviously had worked for a very large corporation and uh, and there were, you know, I had plenty of people working with me, producers and videographers and this and that. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm on my own. Mm-hmm. And I realized the freedom that that brought and the and just that that pride that one can feel because you can actually do this on your own. And you know that feeling. It's just mm-hmm. like it's 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 really you just feel like you're in control of your own destiny. And yeah. That and to me it, became really crucial. And you can never go back to, and, and most people listening are are likely entrepreneurs feeling that same exact thing. And and it is this freedom. As you were saying that, I was also thinking it's also sheer terror, you know, because <laughs> you're like, <laughs> like this is jumping off a cliff. Is it, is, you know, what's going to happen? Uh, I've been in business since 2009 and, you know, ride the waves of, of being an entrepreneur. Sure. But I can never, I can't imagine ever going back. Yeah, it's it's a funny thing because I still have a lot of friends um, and colleagues that work in the broadcast business and and also lots of friends that work for you know giant corporations in a number of different areas and I work with big corporations all the time and so sometimes when I when I listen to them and they're talking about their long meetings and making decisions and how do I get people persuade people of this and all you know, all that kind of thing I'm going wow I'm not sure that I don't think I miss those days very much I know it's it's still not that I didn't, I mean, like I said, I loved, loved, loved what I did. It was yeah. a wonderful, wonderful job, but I love, love, love what I do now. And what I love in particular is when somebody has, again, that kind of aha moment where they they just get it. They recognize why they haven't been able to communicate well with people and some simple little tips and tricks that they can do that will make everything better. Because the that. world is all about communication. It's all about communication. Would, would you say so? You mentioned that you're you're helping you know leaders and and even some companies. What's the motivation? Uh, I, I was a communications major, so I just love this stuff. I mean, that's my. I mean, I could talk communications all day. But for somebody who maybe that's not their background, what makes them want to improve their communication skills? Is it to, so they can be a thought leader speaking? You know, what what is driving a lot of that? Well, I think it's all of the above. But I think um, it's really about understanding that in order to achieve your goals, whether your goal is better performance, better production, having greater ROIs, um, getting the, the, the best work out of the people that work for you or with you, you have to be able to motivate them in a way that involves great communication. And that's where I think it comes from. Um, And also, it's about telling your own story a lot, especially when I'm doing the media work with people, with companies. uh, It's about they have to tell their story so that people understand it. I love using this, this quote from Maya Angelou, which is people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And when you make people feel something, you instill some passion in them or some motivation or some inspiration. When you can do that, you can actually move mountains. You can can completely change things. And that when I get, when I get people who I've worked with, who write to me or call me or text me and say, I nailed it at this, this speech. And 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 people really now understand why we're doing what we're doing, even when it's really tough conversations. Yeah. 
at, at the core of it, at the very core of it, and I think this is crucially important in our world today, is about respect. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, Not a lot of it going around on social media, very, <laughs> you know, depending on. That would be true. Yeah. Okay. A lot to unpack there. I, I want to start with what you said, though, about the stories. And, and definitely you and I um, are kindred spirits because that's my passion is to help people to tell their stories. And I love that you're helping them do it in a, in a little bit of a different way than I am. But I, because I, I help people with their stories through publishing them and getting it out there. And because mm -hmm. I believe, and it's not about us, right? Our stories, ultimately, whether you're saying it from a stage in front of a camera, in a book, on a podcast, it's not for us. I mean, we have the story, but the this our stories are intended for others because we connect through story. We learn through story. We want to know like, wow, she left a, a career and started her own business. And if she can do it, I can do it. So I love that you, you help people to do that. Um, I also want to unpack the respect piece because this goes hand in hand. And especially whether, no matter if you're working in a company, if you're, a, especially if you're a leader, you have to know how to communicate with respect. So do you want to talk about that? Share a little bit more about what you think about that. Well, um, I actually uh, did a story for Forbes recently that, um, and my stories are, my, my columns are supposed to be really about women and communications. Um, and it was about a study that actually had been done with particularly younger workers. <laughs> and the study basically said, these younger workers, many of them, the Gen Z era, uh, which means they're in their 20s, early 20s, just beginning their work careers, a little bit of millennials who felt like they, were, they weren't getting any, they weren't getting accolades or praise when they did something well. And they were getting a lot of negative criticism uh, without there being kind of instruction or concrete um you know, there's a difference between bad criticism and concrete criticism. Mm -hmm. And 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 they're just they just felt that they were completely unappreciated. Now, think about the difference between how you can talk to somebody when there's been maybe something wasn't perfect, maybe the project didn't come in on time, or maybe the way in which it was done didn't have the desired results. You can go scream at someone and say, you know, why'd you do it that way? What's wrong with you? Blah, 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 blah. Or you can say, let's talk through about why this approach didn't work. What do you think? Showing enough respect to ask their opinion, because they know it didn't work. Right. But to say, what do you think? Where did we, uh, you know, not dot the I's across the T's? Where did we, you know, not think it through as carefully as we could have, or maybe it's what what would you if we could add to this or redo it? What would you, what would what should we do? How would we should we have done it? And then also using your own experience to say, I've had this same thing happen in the past, mm -hmm. and here's what I ultimately did and how I was able to use it as a learning experience. Because that's really what you want. Right. You can't go back and and you can't take it back. You can't take back whatever went wrong. But what you can do is learn from it and say, now we know never to try it that way again. Yes. I love and, that because you're so right. And if, you know, any, a leader could say, you know, and come out with being aggressive and like, why'd you do it that way? But, but approaching it with like sincerity and respect and questions Asking them, because if you, th that's the other thing as a leader, we need to be pulling out of people, you know, giving them ownership and, and helping them to learn from whatever they did right or did wrong. Um, but we can't be telling them what to do. We have to be asking and, and, and approaching it differently. Yeah. And that, that just gets back to, to, to sim simply being respectful. If you hire somebody for a job, you anticipate that they have the qualifications to do that job. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they know every aspect of it. And if they're young, then and, and you know, new to that field or new to the workforce or whatever it is, there is a learning curve. And you know, one of the things I did when I got to NBC was because I was really young and there were a lot of very veteran 
a correspondence and anchors and things at this television station. And I knew that I really had to prove myself and I had to do it quickly. So I went to uh, these veterans, mm -hmm. um, particularly when I was covering a, maybe a story that was a long time New York City story. But I didn't know all the facts. I didn't grow up there. I didn't know the, all the people involved. And I'd go to them and say, can you give me a quick history lesson? Can you tell me what the really important issues were here from the past? Um, I want to know and absorb as much as I possibly can so that I can do a good job. Mm -hmm. And I found, I don't think I ever found a person who wasn't willing to help. So I guess my biggest piece of advice is ask, just ask, because you'll be stunned at how people are perfectly willing to help you. And and I, and then, you know, later as my career went on, when we'd have interns, for example, coming in, or even, you know, even today, I get tons of calls and letters and emails from people who say, you reinvented yourself. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. I love helping them yes. because it's sharing the wealth. Yeah. I, mean, I was privileged enough to have had all these remarkable things happen to me. And I believe it's our duty to give back. Mm. And that's what I think, you know, I like doing that. I'm sure you do too. So just in from both ends, ask if you need the help. And volunteer if you think you can help. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. Makes life a little more enjoyable too, right? You know, when, when we're not thinking about ourselves all the time and we think about others, it's just, it just shifts our perspective on everything. Mm -hmm. um, gratitude. I want to, I want to wrap, I want to talk a little bit to something that you and I actually were just kind of visiting about before we, we went live, but I think it's important, especially for women who are listening, um, you know, that it's so easy to be critical of ourselves and, you know, being in the media, uh, how much have you seen that? And and when you're trying to help people to present and all that, where does the the mindset and those little jabs we give ourselves play into our success as communicators or, or leaders? We are our own worst enemies. We really are. So I use a lot of video in my work. I, I, um, I video people, I do mock interviews with them, mock presentations, mock speeches, whatever it is, we put it on video and then we look at it. Mm -hmm. And to a person, they say, I hate my voice. I don't like the way I look. And I'm going, okay, you only get one criticism, nothing, <laughs> just one. And, and, and don't be so hard on yourself. What's so interesting is that our perception of ourselves is so different than the way others perceive us. And there's a little a little thing that I also coach people to do when they're trying to figure out, you know, branding their company, maybe, or or who am I or how do I come across? I say, get like people, colleagues, you know, colleagues or peers, friends, family, and ask them each to write down like a sentence of who you are or what your greatest traits are. Or, or whatever it is. And people when you do that, you get back this whole different thing that you will not believe. You're going to be astonished about what people think of you. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's usually a lot better than what you think of yourself. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, and then if you get that and you look at it and you say, wow, I had no idea that they, that that's how I come across. Yeah. And you, and you, and put that into your psyche. We, um, we, you know, we need to be our own best self-advocate. We need to believe in ourselves, especially if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Oh you my goodness, yes. <laughs> and you got to believe that you have a gift for whatever it is you're doing, or that you have a great idea, or that this is really worth it, because it it's important to you. And so you have to let the world know how important it is to you, and that you have to have the confidence and the ability to, to, to let it be like that. So, you know, all those outside things that derail us, especially women, oh, my hair, oh, my hair today, my hair today isn't perfect, but you know. Both of us said it, but <laughs> here, nobody's looking at our hair and if they are. <laughs> um, and it's just, it, it's, you know, which gets me to the whole point of body language as well, because I do a lot of work in the body language space, mm -hmm. which I love and fascinated by it. So for all these years that we've been walking the earth, 
we've only had a spoken language for 160,000, which means we communicated through simply through our bodies, through the way we used our eyes, our facial expressions, our gestures, you know, just everything that we did was a sign of good or bad, fear or flight, um, you know, fear, flight or fright. It, it's it's just, it's innate and we still do it. And we make these judgments that can be completely off base, but we make them. So think about is your body supporting what you're saying or is it not? Is it in sync? If it's not in sync, then you're disingenuous. Then people don't believe you. Yeah. So all of that is, it's all part of how we communicate. I just love this. And I could talk to you all day because communication is, I have such a passion for it. And, um, but you have to work at it. I mean, we all communicate. We've learned, you know, we grew up, we learned to talk and walk and all these things, but being intentional about, you know, from your your eye contact to how you hold yourself, like you said, too, but also the intentional of how you're thinking about yourself. And you said that about the belief. And it's a quote I've always I have said it for years is that people will believe in you to the exact degree you believe in yourself. So if you believe that you have something to share with somebody to make an impact, they're going to believe you, right? But if you believe, oh, I'm not, who am I? I'm not good enough and all that. Well, they're going to believe that too. So right. it's just, right. it starts with us and communicating. Uh, and, and the one thing that I tell people all the time when they have fear or they, or they, they think, you know, there's this old joke about communications that, um, the fear of public speaking is so intense that at a funeral, somebody would be rather in the coffin than giving the eulogy. Okay. So Crazy, fear. Right? <laughs> now, one of the things is you're there making that presentation or doing that interview or leading the meeting or doing whatever you're doing, because in that moment, you're the expert on that subject. That's and right. You know more about it than anybody else in the room. So if you forget something, if you screw it up a bit, you don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's so true. <laughs> so, and you can slip it back in later when it comes back into your head. So just know that you deserve to be where you are in that moment in time. My dad used to, this is so silly, but my dad used to say, like, if you pronounce something wrong, say it louder. So at least it sounds like, you know, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Authority. <laughs> Authority. That's right. That's right. I know so many people that, um, I mean, I personally would love to learn more about what you're doing and how you're helping people because um, presenting and all of that in video and in now, especially because we do so much video, how can people learn more about what you're doing and, and how you can help them? Well, you can go to my website, which is really simple. It's Jane Hansen, which is H-A-N-S-O-N dot com. And there is a way to contact me on there. And my email is simply Jane at Jane Hansen dot com. Um, I've also got I've got two courses out there right now that are at a place called Gen Connect U that are um, about presenting and about making videos. And a new one is coming out soon. And that's all about body language and how to make your body really work for you. And it's a super, super fun course. Um, it'll So we can certainly let people know when that's available so you can do things that way. Or, you know, I do I do a multitude of different kinds of courses and, and I customize it to fit everyone. You know, we work with schedules, budgets, what you need, what your goals are, blah, 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 blah. So it's it's um it's it's, it's all it's all great. Okay. So and definitely again, reach out to Jane at Jane Hansen with an O, S O N um, dot com or email jane at janehansen.com and the Gen Connect You. I'm going to look into that. That sounds interesting. Uh, courses on there. Here's the thing, no matter where you are in your life or your career, you can. we can all learn to better communicate. And I think that there's, if there's, uh, there's no downside to that. So definitely check out Jane's courses. And what would be final thoughts? What is something that, or somebody listening, maybe they're, they don't even know where to start or they think they're a pretty good communicator, but they're not really sure. What would you say? What advice would you give to somebody like that? Could be somebody young, could be somebody who's been doing this a while. But how could you help? I, them? I would suggest that you take your phone because we all can video on our phones. Video yourself either 
uh, just talking, talking mm -hmm. about maybe you're giving, you know, hosting a meeting, maybe you're making a pitch, whatever it is, just video yourself and take a look at it and see what you like and then what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And then, and then redo it with adding what you think and what you don't, you know, what you think looks better and, and et cetera. And, and, and believe in using, making, making your voice have a lot of variety to it, using your body language and your eye contact mm -hmm. and really just take a good hard look at how you're coming across. Mm -hmm. And, and if you're brave enough, you can show it to somebody else too and ask them for their advice. But we don't really look at ourselves that often and how we appear to the outside world. Right. And so by videoing it, you can take a look and you can say, hmm, that's good. And mm, that's not so good. Well <laughs> and, and then make some changes. And, and I say one change at a time. Maybe one day it's I need to have better eye contact with people. So I'm going to try that for two weeks. And then now you, that's becoming a habit. Then you say, I do a lot. I use a lot of crutch words, you know, like, so um, uh, to this, these couple of weeks, I'm not going to use any crutch words because that really takes away from our credibility. And then maybe two weeks later, it's, I need to sit up straighter. This mm -hmm. week, I'm going to focus on how I sit or how I stand with good posture. And just little tiny things that build up is what I would do. Okay. I love that. It's so simple because anyone can jump on a Zoom, do it on their phone. And just take that honest look at yourself. That's great advice. Thank you so much. And thank you for being on the show. This has just been such a great conversation. Thank you. It's I I loved it. You're great. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> that, I take a lot. Of that. That's a compliment coming from you. So thank you very much. And well, I'm going to I'm going to wrap up the show. And, I, you know, I took so much from Jane. I have notes actually here of all these different things. And I'll just kind of my recap of you know, some great advice. Just first of all, ask, ask people for help. People want to help. I mean, people are people, right? I say that all the time. Volunteer, give. We will always have a more grateful heart when we are focused on someone else versus ourselves. I love the advice she gave about, you know, asking the people closest to you or asking, you know, five people in your life to what is your greatest asset? That is such awesome advice. And that will help us to see ourselves for who we are and be confident in that, believe in ourselves, because at the end of the day, communication is about serving someone else. And the better we can communicate what we can share with others personally or professionally to help them, uh, the more impact we're going to make. So that's it for today's show, everybody. Make it a great day. And we'll see you next time on the Power of Authority Spotlight. much for listening to the Power of Authority Spotlight. If you are a successful founder, entrepreneur, business owner, or leader that's getting results and making a difference, and you'd like to be on this program, please visit performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast to apply. That's performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast. Also, if you got something out of this interview, please share this episode. Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag, the power of authority spotlight. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content, so make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing. Your thumbs up, ratings, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our websites, performancepublishinggroup.com or michelleprince.com. And follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.